This conference will now be recorded. All right, everything you say, Advaith, is going to be recorded. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, same, same as Visished. I've, I've done public speaking before, but like not that recently. Okay. And yeah, I, I mean, unlike him, I, I don't really have that much experience at school. Speaking, oh. but I'm not I'm not that nervous about it all right oh, not a lot of nervous folks and I only see one girl with her video on Shri, uh, Shristi is it Shristi oh I don't know I think I lost Shristi or are you uh you know you need to unmute yourself Shristi Or am I just not pronouncing your name and you're not sure? How about Akshaya? Hi. Hey, have you done any public speaking before? Yeah, mostly in classes, like presentations. Mostly. Oh, yes. So it's uh, more with the safe audience, your friends? Yeah. 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 And how do you but find that? Like, not always with friends. Like sometimes the teachers do pick us partners, so yeah. Oh, pick partners. Don't you love that? Don't you love it when your teachers pick your partners? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it depends on your partner. I yeah. know. Yeah, that'll follow you through adulthood. <laughs> oh, welcome. <laughs> I love that you guys have your video on. I I prefer to see people when I present. And uh, I've, I've mostly spoken on stages, and so it's easy to see people. But um, on video calls, Usually people prefer to keep their videos switched off and then there's less engagement. That's why for those who just joined, if you can switch on your videos, that might make uh, it it'll be nice. It'll be more interactive. Thank you. And while uh, people are uh, starting up their videos, I would personally like to thank you for joining us today and uh, uh, coaching our youngsters, the next generations, on how to lead and how to speak in public. Thank on you. behalf of uh, Ontario Telugu Foundation, we thank you so much for your time on this. No uh, the stage is all yours. All right, the stage is mine. I am in my son's Lego room. Perfect stage for this. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. I know you all could be, I don't know, playing video games, reading books, hanging out, well, social distancing with your friends. I'm so grateful for your time here. Um, and I hope that you take something out of this whole session um, that I want to share to you about public speaking and leadership. So let's let's get it started. There's quite a lot of content that I'd like to cover. But before that, I'd like to confirm with those that are on, can you see my screen? Everything's good? There's agenda, yes, okay, I see Vishish, thumbs up, thanks Akshaya, perfect. All right, so for today, I'd like to cover the why, the what, and the how, right? So one of the things that I keep um, sharing with people is that public speaking and leadership, it is an important craft to learn. Um, and it can actually be learned. It's not something that you just have to figure it out. You can actually learn it. And how can you, as a public speaker, whether you're confident or even if you're not confident, whatever stage you are in, how can you stand out? Just that one step to make you stand out as a public speaker. And the how is, how can you implement it today? Because you're all here, you're giving me your hour and a half. I hope that you can take some techniques that you can implement today so that you can be a very strong public speaker and a very strong leader, okay? At the end of this presentation, what I would love, love, love for all of you guys to take from this is a storytelling method that I'm gonna share, um, the best speeches that I've heard till to date. And if you guys have role models that you follow, they're the best storytellers. So I would love for you guys to learn some storytelling methods. And I also want you to go with some knowledge of what is important in a speech. When you create a speech, what should you be more focused on? Whether should you be focused on your words? Should you be focused on your tone, your body language? So what piece is it? And um, 
thank you, Murali and Nivas. They, they're the ones who asked me to present to you guys. And one of the things that Nivas asked me to present was about leadership. Now, leadership is a huge, big umbrella. If, if I was to think of leadership, it's a big umbrella. Public speaking is like one small segment of leadership. And then there's negotiation, there's uh, mediation, conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, all that good stuff. They all fall under leadership. So unfortunately, I don't have enough time today. It's only one and a half hours, but I'll try and talk to you about some small little things about leadership that you can take today and you can start implementing. And if we do have time, I would love to teach you the art of negotiation so that you can negotiate with your parents. You know, that extra video gaming time, that extra TV time, there's always, there's always ways to do that. I'm, I, I, I assume there are parents here too, but <laughs> it's very good to know that too. So if we have time, I'd love to cover that as well. All right. So before I start, you're probably wondering, I'm, I'm not uh, really part of the uh, Ontario Telugu Foundation, so you're probably wondering, oh, who is this person? Who is Anu? Um, well, my, my name is Anu. I, I hope uh, my screen name uh, clarifies that to you. I actually am, um, I started off my journey in the computer field because I always thought computers would give me a good paying job and I'll be settled for life. It was all true. I did my bachelor's in uh, computer information system. I got a good job, but I always found that I stagnated. I stayed in one role for a very, very long time, and I never understood why. So after a few years, I thought, okay, I'm ready for this team lead position. And my manager gave me the shock of my life. They're like, well, I'm you're great as a software developer, but no, you're not good as a team leader. <laughs> so you're not getting promoted as a team leader. I was really, really, really sad about that. And one of the one of the things that I did was I actually went out to my mentor. At that time, I had mentors, and it's really, really good for you guys to have mentors. One of the things I did was I went out to a mentor, and a mentor told me, Anu, she, you know, she looked me right into my eyes and said, Anu, what got you here as a software developer won't get you to a team lead position. You need to work towards a team lead. And I was confused, like, what do I need to do? And that's when she talked to me about public speaking and leadership and soft skills. And she taught me, she told me about, you know, what to do to volunteer for organizations, to build teams, to get coached by really strong leaders, et cetera. And through that path, I learned that leadership and public speaking are actually learned skills. Like no one taught me this. And I wish at your age, I learned that. Um, and I learned it in a fun way. You know, I, I wish I I got that because I feel like if I did at your age or at an earlier age, I would be 10 steps ahead of where I am right now. So I used uh, so anyways, I to make long story short, I actually ended up becoming a team lead and then a project. And I, right now I'm a project manager for the city of Markham. But I, as a part part time, I also teach leadership and public speaking to adults, as you can see in this picture, mostly they're adults. And I also then started teaching, three years ago, I started teaching youth. So someone approached me and they said, wow, you're teaching adults how to speak better, how to communicate better, how to stand up on stage in front of 10,000 people. I uh, train people to go on TEDx stages and present TED Talks and all those things. So they're like, why can't you do it for kids? And I said, kids, really? No, <laughs> they're not ready yet. <laughs> That was my initial reaction. So don't don't get pissed off. It was my initial reaction. I didn't think I could do it more so because I thought I was an adult trainer. But I started teaching a few kids, a few kids, and I realized that kids have this power in them. They're these punches that if you say something and if it moves them, they get it and they roll with it. So I have trained, I would say right now, close to 100. Uh, kids in many, many areas, whether it's uh, investor pitches. So I have kids who are 16, 15 years old who have product ideas and they want to go and stand in front of investors and pitch their ideas. Actually, one of them you see there. Um, I have students who just want to learn how to speak about something that they care about. I have kids who want to learn to be good team leaders, et cetera. So I take them through modules and learning. So that's something that I also do, youth leadership coaching. 
My ultimate goal for now is to coach 10,000 youth to play an integral leadership role in a field of their choice. Whatever your choice is, whatever you want to do in life, I would love to be part of that. Um, that I would like to play a part in that. So that's kind of my journey and who I am. Are you still able to see my screen and hear me? I just want to check. Yeah, okay, I see Akshaya shaking her head. This is great. I love that you guys have your video on so I can. All right, so now, as I promised, the agenda starts off with why, right? Why is public speaking and leadership skills important to learn? All right, now, when you guys, I, I'm not sure, maybe we can make this a little interactive. So Akshaya, what, what do you see yourself doing when you grow up? Like, do, you, do you have an idea? Yeah, before, like, I wanted to become, like, an aeronautical engineer, but then I changed my mind to become a singer. So I'm not really sure about it now, but mostly I want to become a singer. All right, that's awesome. Well, that is really good that you have that path that's created for you. And it all starts with visualizing in your head that what yeah. you want to do, right? Now, singing, aeronautical engineering, they all require soft skills and leadership skills. Uh, is there someone over here who wants to be a software developer or want to go into corporate Canada or corporate America? Anyone? Meaning, uh, software developer, I guess, engineer, mathematician, whatever. No, not. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. But well, if you don't want to be in corporate Canada, which is where I am, I actually wanted to just share a story. We usually start off at the bottom, which is the technical analyst or an associate role, right? And what school teaches you is how to be strong at that role, that technical analyst role. And your technical skills is very important there. But as you keep moving up the ladder, it's the soft skills, the public speaking skills, the leadership skills that are important. Why is it important? Because the CEO or the president doesn't need to know how to code a video game. They don't need to know how to create a great website. What they need to know is how do I keep motivate my employees so that they create the best products, right? Like Steve Jobs doesn't need to know all the ins and outs of uh, coding and everything, although he does, he doesn't need to. What he needs to know is how to lead a team, how to, how to negotiate, how to manage conflicts, et cetera, right? So as you keep moving up the ladder, it's the soft skills and the leadership skills that'll get you promoted to the next level. Now, I know uh, many of you said, no to corporate Canada. I just came up with this example because a lot of the students that I teach, they want to be engineers or software engineers or accountants, uh, which is all great. And so they tell me, well, Anu, I just want to be an engineer. I don't, why do I need to learn public speaking or leadership? Oh, just tell me how to talk. You really need to know how to be a leader. You really need to know how to effectively communicate. And you sh you might get the opportunity to stand up on stage. So let's just take this example. And I actually teach design thinking to kids, um, to, especially to teenagers, especially when they want to go and present their case to an investor. Now, when you think about design thinking, you're thinking about your customer. Okay, what am I building for my customer? You have to empathize with them and say, oh, okay, what is your problem? What is your problem and how can I help solve that problem? Defining that problem. And many times you will be interviewing stakeholders. So you're interviewing your customers, really trying to assess, okay, what exactly can I solve for? And you're actively listening. Now, these are soft skills that are not taught again. And there are ways to actively listen, take down notes, summarize your findings. One of the things I, I actually worked with a lot of um, suppliers, uh, not now, but in a previous job. And one of the things I hated was these suppliers, they just come in, they say, oh, okay, I know you want a website? Okay, great, I can, don't worry, I'll get it done. They come back six months later and then the website is totally crappy or not something that I wanted. In that two hours with me, try and understand what I want. You know, why do I want that? 
and then summarize your findings. Tell me, okay, I know, I think this is what you want. You want a website which is not too flashy, just gives enough content to attract the right clientele. The clientele that you're looking for is youth age 10 to 15 year olds. Perfect, they're interested in this. These are the blocks. And when you when you have those kind of conversations, it's much more effective. It makes you a much more effective engineer, a software developer. So what I'm trying to tell you is public speaking, leadership, soft skills, it helps in even the most technical roles. Anything to do with human to human interaction, that is very important, all right? So that is that. And another thing that I teach is about personal branding. Has anyone over here heard about personal branding? Or want to at least guess what personal branding means, perhaps? Yeah? Sorry, I think, is it Ankita or, how about Ankita? Do you know what personal branding is? No, okay. Uh, Vishisht, do you wanna give it a shot? No, Nimish? Give it a shot? No, okay. All right, let me, let me explain. Personal branding is, have you guys seen the Nike sign? Like the sign that you see here? Yes? Yes? No? The Nike sign? Akshaya, yeah. do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. So when you see the Nike sign, you know it's Nike. When you see the Coca-Cola sign, you know it's Coca-Cola. You know it's a beverage. When you see uh, Apple on a laptop or on your phone, on your iPhone, you know. That's called a brand. It's called, you know, this is the brand that I'm buying. As humans, we can have a brand as well. So what if I ask one of you, what is your personal brand? It is, what is it that you can do to impact the community? What is it that you can do? And what is that unique thing that you can do? So for me, it is, I can connect with adults and with youth about the about the art of public speaking, for example, or I want to make an impact to 10,000 youth to help them in their leadership role. I want to transform 10,000 youth and make them leaders. That that is my brand. That is why you would come to me. You wouldn't come to me to code a website. No, please don't come to me for that. That's not my unique value. So even as human beings, we all can have a personal brand. And that is what leaders do. If you see Steve Jobs, if you see Elon Musk, if you see Jeff Bezos, they all have a unique brand in them. You would go to them, you would think of them like Amazon, you think of Jeff, right? Uh, Tesla, you think of Elon, right? They, that is their personal brand and everyone can do it. So I help people do that as well. All right, any questions up till now? All right, let's play a game. Let's shake things up a bit. Why don't you, do you guys all have a website and uh, you guys are in front of the computer? So why don't we do this? I will share something on the chat. I want you to go into that chat and type this on your website and answer the question that's there. So the question is about sharing your feelings about public speaking. I know some of you shared it. And some of you who are shy, especially, if you can maybe, in one word, if you can share your feelings about public speaking, I would love to see that. You guys able to, anyone having trouble? I, I just posted on the chat. Oh, I see four people voted, great. More people can vote. <laughs> so when, so basically the question is, when you're asked to give a speech in front of 10,000 people, use one word to explain your feeling. So if you can just type in one word that you think, yep, I love it, I love it. Seeing people voting, good, good stuff. Nine people have put in their suggestions. Great. Still looking for more if you have it. 
Okay, let me just show you what I see. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, yeah. Can can one of you confirm if you can see my screen? Nimish, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes, actually. Okay. Perfect. So nervous. That's a big word. Frizon. What is frizon? Who wrote frizon? I don't even know what that means. Self-conscious butterflies. What does frizon mean? Now I'm curious. Anyway, who who wrote that word? It's just excitement and nervousness at the same time. Oh, right. Oh, I learned a new word. A sudden strong feeling of excitement or fear, a thrill. Perfect. See, this is why I love teaching kids. You guys, you know, you know so much that adults don't know. <laughs> so great. Frizzon. Self-conscious, butterflies, stressful. Yep. Nothing. They're just people. That's great. So mostly, uh, oh, proud, stressful, excited. Yep. Yep. Ah, for sure. And, and I love seeing this because there's a range of feelings. If you guys see this, there's a range of feelings. Some people feel nervous, some, you know, butterflies. And butterflies are actually very good. They're actually very good for you because that means there's a slight adrenaline rush, right? You're getting pumped to go on stage. You need that. Edgy, yes. Uh, proud, proud when you're done, for sure. <laughs> I'm always proud when I'm done. And hopefully I'll feel proud after this session too. Uh, Self-conscious, totally get that as well. Yeah, this is good. So thank you very much for participating in this. I have more polls, so don't worry about it. I will keep, let me now switch over to my slide deck, which, so this part is talking to you about feelings. So what we just covered right now is who I am. My name is Anu, I told you about my journey and then why it's important to learn public speaking, leadership and soft skills in any field that you choose, whether it's singing, dancing, acting, you know, like singing, dancing, acting, 100%. You need to be able to go up on stage and really present yourself, be confident, you know, incorporate those power poses, which, we'll be, which we will be going through today right? All those wonderful things. So those are very important. But even with engineering, even with law, even with accounting, all those jobs that you think are all technical, no, it's those soft skills that are going to move you up. So we covered the why. Now what we're going to cover is more the what, all right? So what can we do to stand out? So effectively, public speaking is just storytelling. It is telling a story and making a point. So Bill Gove, he is uh, he used to be the president of the National Speakers Association. That's what he said. And he wrote a couple of books as well. And he always talked about effective storytelling. When you go up there and you give a speech, and I will take you through that whole journey, but there are so many emotions that you need to cover. There's a wide range of emotions. Like uh, when, when you're thinking of a story, you have to think about, well, was I fearful? Was I disgusted? Like, did I taste something that was so disgusting and I can make a story out of that? Was I angry? Something that's happening that's making me angry. Can I write a speech around that? Or I had this surprise event or I'm very happy. These are emotions. So stories come out of your emotions. Right? They're evoked by your emotions and experiences. Those are the ones that stick in your head. Because when I ask you what is the best memory or what's the most happiest memory, you'll go back to a story. You won't go back to Newton's first law of, you know, <laughs> whatever, the theories and all that. What you'll go back to is what impacted you and what made you happy. Now, I've taught students who'll be like, ah, oh, Anu, I'm so boring. Do I, you know, I don't have any stories. Or they might be like, uh, I don't want to tell my story, but I want to tell a story. And I say, that's fine, that's fine. Sometimes if you don't want to talk about story, your stories, you can talk about other people's stories. You can also give examples without stories. So for example, if, if I, uh, you know, I, like I mentioned to you, I help people pitch their ideas to investors so that they can get money, right? Or I help people with their sales techniques and all that. Now, if I was to come out to you, Namish, and say, if you sell more, you get more profit. Is that, is that motivational? Right. Yeah, no, right? Yeah, exactly. It'll be like, sell more so that you get paid more. I mean, please, I know that. I know you don't need to come and tell me that. But if I say, okay, Namish, you know, when you ask for a Big Mac at McDonald's or a cheeseburger or whatever it is, what does the person at the counter say? They say, 
Do you want fries with that? So Namish, did you know that one question helps make millions and millions of dollars in revenue from McDonald's? That one question. So what I want you to do is, if you want to increase sales, simply ask customers if they simply want something that is complementary to what is purchased, right? That makes more sense rather than go sell, go make more, right? So I, I essentially didn't tell you a story. What I told you is an experience. You go, you all know what McDonald's is. You all have gone and you all know that they asked, you want a side of fries with that? Do you want to make it a combo? Why are they doing that? Not because they love you, but because they want to make extra money and they're making you aware of that. So if you tell stories in that way, people really get it. And you actually are selling without making people sound like you're a salesperson, right? So essentially when you're, speaking when you're on stage you are master storytellers so one of the first things did anyone actually see this does anyone know what this is the golden circle anyone if uh, anyone uh, without the video want to switch off i mean want to switch on their voice and it's okay you don't have to be on video to talk <laughs> that's also okay okay um, let's, I, I'd like to educate you about the golden circle. This actually, if you are interested after this, I highly, highly recommend you to watch a TED talk. Um, do you guys, are you guys aware of TED talk? Akshaya, Nimish, Visisht? Yes? Yeah, okay, perfect. So this is TED talk by Simon Sinek, S-I-M-O-N Sinek. And he talks about the golden circle. So he talks about how companies, uh, those companies that we rarely think about, they mostly talk about what they do. Like I sell computers, I sell burgers, I sell uh, shoes, you know? And they say, okay, I make the shoes in a factory in this sort of way. But they don't talk about the why. They don't talk about why they sell. And it is the why that actually makes a difference. And you know, one of the, one of the uh, companies that did such an amazing job of this is Apple. Now, if you think about Apple, right? Apple is, is it a computer company? Is it a consumer electronic company? Is it a smartphone company? Like what company is it? It is, it, it builds so many different things like from an iPod, to iPhones, to ITV, all that. That's what they do, right? But imagine if Apple came to you and said, well, we make great computers. They're user-friendly, beautifully designed um, and easy to use. Here you go, buy one. You know, Vishish, are you gonna buy that? you're probably going to be like, well, so does Microsoft, <laughs> so does Dell, so does IBM, you know, they all make computers. What makes you any different, right? But one of the things that Apple did was they have this logo which says think different and that's their why, they think different. So they come out to you and especially watch Steve Jobs unveiling of the iPhone. He says, you know, the way he puts it is with everything we do we aim to challenge the status quo we aim to think differently our products are user friendly they're beautifully designed and easy to use we just happen to make great computers want to buy one so now all of a sudden they're making you curious, a little curious about what they do. Oh, you aim to challenge your status. So that means you don't make the same type of computers that Microsoft does. You think differently. So maybe there's, you know, your audio quality, maybe your video quality is better, maybe your editing quality is better, all that good stuff. So they, they bring in curiosity. Your stories have to always start with why. Why am I doing what I am doing? Then you go into how, and then you go into what, all right? So that, if if anything, remember, start with why. Go and look up his TED Talk. He has a book. It's really pretty good, actually. All right, let's go to the next slide. Now let's uh, look at this. There's a game after this as well, so make sure that you're uh, listening to me. And then when I when I ask, it's 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 a little more easy. It's it's interesting. I want you guys to really remember or write down these five things about storytelling, right? When I tell people, okay, you need to be good storytellers, people think about the baby stories that they heard once upon a time, there lived a little girl called Little Red Riding Hood. She went off to the woods and she saw a fox. This is all great, right? But 
that story, they all come with a method. There is a method to writing your story. And when you know this technique and when you learn this technique and rehearse it, trust me guys, the nervousness will reduce. The confidence will increase because you believe in you. When, when you believe in something so strongly, oh my God, it's an amazing feeling. You're not going to be as nervous. You're going to really, and you're going to know you're going to move your audience in some way, shape or form, right? So these five C's are very important. First of all, you think about the character in your story. So let's take my story, for example, all right? The story that I shared with you about my manager. I thought I was going to get this cool promotion to being a team leader, but they said no, right? So who, who are the characters in that story? It's me and my manager, right? And then my mentor. They are the characters in the story. So keep in mind your characters. And then what's the conflict? If you watch movies, your Telugu movies, any type of movies, English, whatever movies you guys watch, there's always conflict. It's never once upon a time, a couple lived happily, happily ever after. No, there's always, you know, lots of conflict. There's fighting. There is, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's the movies that you guys recently watched? Anyone want to share the most recent movies you guys watched or shows that you watch? name sorry the name of the movie yeah the name of the movie yeah i watched the flash the fly the flash oh the fl oh yes and in the flash clearly there's a lot of conflict that's involved right yes right sorry who was that oh that was kanish all right perfect yes kanish so that that was there's a lot of conflict that's involved and conflict makes it so engaging a story so engaged that's why you want to watch that right in my case the conflict was with my manager it's like wait a minute i want a promotion and you're saying that i'm not capable of things so that was my conflict and then the cure is like the doctor that you go to and say oh my you know you start crying and going oh my god my job and no one loves me and whatever it is you go to someone who is that someone that you go to right they will provide you the cure. And in my case, it was my mentor. My mentor gave me the cure. What did my mentor say? My mentor told me what got you here will not get you there. Now remember that, what got you here will not get you there, right? And they told me how I can make my life better. And then I changed around. I volunteered in many organizations. I took a couple of coach, uh, courses. I got coaches to coach me up. And I also changed jobs, found another manager, who also helped me in my career path as well, right? And the carry out message, now that is very, very important. The carry out message is your summary. It is, in my case, my carry out message to, for the speech is what got you here won't get you there. So if I was to give you this, give the speech, that could be my title, that could be my message. What got you here will not get you there. And in essence, when you have a carry out message, your story will be more focused and more aligned to that. Do you, do you guys understand this? It might be complicated, it might not be. This, Namish, did you understand the carry out message? Yeah, okay, all right, perfect. Uh, please stop me if you don't understand. So if I, again, next slide actually shows you, if you can see, the character is, I told my manager I deserved a promotion. So it's me and my manager over there that those are the characters. The conflict is he said that I was technically strong, but not someone who can lead teams. The cure is my mentor. My mentor said, what well, got you here won't get you there. And I mean, obviously she didn't stop at that. <laughs> she went past that. But I'm trying to say that that was the main message. That was the cure. Like that is what convinced me because I thought all this time I deserved a promotion. I should be moved up to team lead. But because she explained it in such a way that I understood it, that was my cure. So all I needed to do was volunteer, was to help build teams, to put that in my resume, to get a coach, to get me up faster and elevate my leadership skills. I joined Toastmasters to practice public speaking and I found a new manager because I realized that my current manager was not going to support me through that journey. They had this, they had this personal bias in them they didn't want to, and I found a new manager and they coached me and I got I got a team lead position. I've moved past that. And my carry out message is what got you here won't get you there. All right, so now next, now it's your turn. So hopefully you guys have written character, conflict, cure, change, carry out message. 
What I'd like you guys to do now is to listen to this video. And I'd like you guys to write down what the characters were, the conflict, the cure, the change, and the carry out message. Is that, and the carry out message is something that you have to create. He does not say it in his speech. This is where you guys intensely listen to his speech and then come up, we'll come up with some interesting carry out messages. Okay, good, good stuff. Yeah, okay. I want you guys, so Akshay and Namish, if you can help me out here, I'm going to play the video and can you just tell me if you can hear it, okay? Um, oh, there's a game time. Uh, we'll, we'll skip that game time right now. Let's just go to this. Just one minute, it's, no. can you hear a sound? Yes? Yeah. No? Yeah. Uh, so you can't hear it? No. No, oh, damn. Uh, we try to make this work and still don't hear it, right? Mm, let me see. Like if... usually when you want to present something, uh there's there's like an option to like connect your sound too, I'm guessing. Yeah, I tested it with Morley. I don't think he's here anymore, but uh yeah, I'm here I'm watching. Can you try and uh, increase the volume? I can hear it faintly, I know. Oh, okay. So try increasing the volume on the uh, uh, YouTube itself. Uh, yeah, try, try playing it. Uh, let me just... Uh... I just finished a program just yeah, like this. Yeah, it works now. Center. It works? Oh, okay. Yeah. So let me... Cases and I was in luck because. Uh, hold on. Let me try. But it's yeah. a little laggy. It's a little laggy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's give it a shot. If not, I'll tell the story and then we can try. How about that? Is that better? Can you hear music? It's okay. kind of breaking. Oh. Hi, this is Chef Hyken. Let's get right to it with a story about a cab driver that delivers outstanding customer service. It was in Dallas, Texas, middle of the summer, 102 degrees. It's so lagging a lot. There's a program just like this. I walked out of the convention center. The audio is like fine, it. but the video is very I laggy. Yeah. Okay, if you can just, uh, just listen to the audio. Let me describe you what happened. Of sorts of sleeveless shirt messed up hair. Hadn't shaved in maybe a week. For all I know, he hadn't showered in a week. I look at this man and I think to myself, this is not a moment of magic. This is a moment of misery. Why? As I look at him, I'm thinking, what does the inside of that taxi cab look like? I mean, look at him. You know what's dirty and grimy in there? You know there's no air conditioning. It's probably broken. I'm going to get into this moving sauna. And 25 minutes later, I will be drenched in sweat. The suit will be wrinkled for the day. And about the time I actually get out of the cab, a little spring's going to pop through the vinyl seat and rip my pants. So I look at him, and he looks at me, and he says in this deep Texan-accented voice, sounded nothing like the man that I was looking at. And I can't even get as low as he can go. But I'll try, he said. Get in the cab. It's nice and cool inside the cab. I'll take care of the bags. And he smiled. It didn't look right. Sure didn't sound right. I looked behind the cab to see if there's a ventriloquist. Well, I handed the gentleman my bags. I opened the door, and cool air hit me in the face. The air conditioners worked just fine. As a matter of fact, it was cold inside the cab. And as I got in, the cab was spotlessly clean. And sitting on the seat next to me were two newspapers, the local Dallas paper and a USA Today. And right in the middle where the hump is, there was a bucket with ice and two soft drinks. Couldn't believe it. I had to look back to make sure the guy was still putting the bags in the back of the cab. Eventually, he gets into the front, picks up a dish of candy, turns around, offers me a piece of candy. And that's when I remembered what mom always said. Don't ever take candy from strangers. This was different. I took the candy and I asked the guy, 
is this your cab or are you like borrowing it for the day? <laughs> and he answered me, he said, and I won't get as low as he can go. He said, this is my cab and you make yourself at home. The newspapers are yours to take with you at the end of the trip, no extra charge. The sodas are yours to drink compliments of me. Have as much candy as you like. And by the way, it's a $22 flat rate, which is the same rate that any honest cab driver would charge you from downtown out to the airport. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And I thought, wow. We get onto the highway, ask me a question no cab driver has ever asked me before. Are you in a hurry? Is it okay if I do the speed limit? Well, by that time, I was reading a newspaper, drinking a soda. I said, take your time. Then we started to talk to one another. He asked me questions like, where are you from? What do you do for a living? We start to converse. And then he asked me if I'd ever seen the famous fountain at Las Colinas. I said, I'm not sure. He said, he described it to me. I said, you know, I've seen a picture. He said, then you've got to see it in person. And he started to get excited. It is right on the way to the airport. If you've got an extra few minutes, I would love to show you the fountain. Just a block off the highway, and I'm not going to charge any extra money. It's a $22 flat rate from downtown out to the airport. And it's not only the most beautiful fountain in the entire Dallas area, it may be the most beautiful fountain in the entire United States. Would you like to see the fountain? I said, show me the fountain. I was getting excited. A mile or so later, he pulls off the highway, and there it is, the beautiful fountain. And he jumped out of the cab, and he pulled me out. He said, look at that. Is that the most beautiful fountain you've ever seen? I'm thinking, you're strange, man. It's just the fountain. But for those that aren't familiar with it, larger than life-size statues of horses galloping across the water, and where their hooves are hitting the water, it's splashing up. And I swear, as you look at these horses, these statues, you can sense energy and motion. And if you didn't see the big buildings, Behind this fountain, you'd swear you were looking out on the prairie at horses running across the water. He goes on and on about it. We're back in the cab. We're on our way back to the airport. And he asked me for a business card because he wants the cards of the people he works for. And we exchanged cards. And he said, the next time you come back to Dallas, you call me. You let me know what time, what flight, what airline. He says, I will be there. I won't charge you any extra money. It's a $22 flat rate. But I will treat you like a limousine driver. I will park the cab outside, I will walk inside, and when you go over to get your bags, I will be standing there with open arms, ready to help you out. He said, don't worry, you'll recognize me. <laughs> so we get to the airport, it's $22, he gets a huge tip. And I love telling this story because it started out to be what? A moment of misery, very good, but it quickly turned into a moment of magic. Because with the exception of the first impression, he not only managed the moments of truth along the way, he created some moments of magic as well. He had the, uh, the, the sodas, he had the newspapers, he had the candy and that little trip to see the fountain. I mean, I couldn't wait to see what we we're gonna do the next time I came back to Dallas, you know, shopping at the new mall. <laughs> well, I can go on and on about Frank, but I'm gonna tell you that's not the best part of the story. Now, as Paul Harvey would say, here is the rest of the story. Four days later, I'm in my office. I open up my mail, and there's a thank you note from my cab driver, Frank. Unbelievable. How often do we receive a thank you note from a cab driver? You know, every Christmas, I get a Christmas card from Frank and his wife. All right. I know that it was uh, lagging. Uh, hopefully, you got, uh, sorry, let me just switch to the next slide. All right, we're back again. Was, was it uh, too bad or could you hear the story? Kind, kind, kind of. of, okay. Sorry about that. Um, so essentially the story is about this guy who was, going to, who was expecting a miserable experience in a taxi cab, but this taxi cab driver gave him the time of his life. He, there was a twist to how his taxi cab looked like. It was, I mean, go, imagine uh, how many, I don't know how many of you have gone to India, but imagine going to India and in the heated weather and a taxi cab that does not have air condition is pretty bad. So you go in and if this guy doesn't look like uh, if they're like ruggedly dressed and they're sweating or, I mean, not sweating, but they're ruggedly dressed, you won't expect their taxi cab to look great. But when he went in there, his taxi cab was cool. He had candy, he had newspaper, everything, all that good stuff. And he even offered to take him to see the fountain in, in Texas as well. And he kept on assuring him it's $22. 
flat rate from downtown to the airport. And he also told him that when you need a taxi cab, the next time you come to Dallas, here's my card, just call me. And he also gave him a Christmas card at the end, a thank you card, sorry, a thank you card. He actually posted it. So the taxi cab driver posted that. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to practice with you. Who did you think the characters were? So if you guys can maybe call out. Yeah, Akshaya, who did you think the characters were? The, the characters were the cab driver and Shep Hankin. Yeah, perfect. And and uh, what was the conflict? Anyone wants to give that a shot? Um, I think the conflict was his thinking, how he thought that maybe his cab drive would be like a misery. Yeah, right. From he, he said from a moment of misery to a moment of magic. Well, magic. it was the mo it's a, it's the moment of misery at this point, right? So the, yeah. he was expecting the worst out of the taxi tri driver. So what was the cure? Vishish, can you try what the cure is? Or Nimish? The cure was uh, how the cab driver gave him a really good experience. It was only $22 no matter how many stops they had and how much candy he ate. Yeah, the candy. Yeah, the candy is definitely good. So what changed? What did he say? What's the change, Namish? Um, the change was going from magic to uh, going from misery, misery to magic. Yeah, from misery to magic. Now, here is where I'd love you guys to tell me. What, what would be the carry out message that you create? So in my case, my carry out message is what got you here will not get you there. What would be the carry out message that you, this is just for you guys to create. Anyone wanna share what their carry out message of this speech is? Anyone? Just feel free to talk. <laughs> never judge a book by its cover. Sure, never judge a book by its cover, for sure. That Definitely does work. Anyone else want to give it a shot? It's okay to take some pressure. Yeah, Kanish, good. Uh, it's okay to take some, take off some pressure. So, what do you mean by it's okay to take off some pressure? Like, like pressure yeah. from her. You have to accept all the situations. From any situation, take off the pressure from any situation. Okay. Yeah. So what both both see so both carry out messages. So Kanish, you thought of the story from taking pressure off a situation, and um, uh, sorry, Namish thought of it as don't judge a book by its cover. So you can imagine there are multiple carry out messages. So it's very important in a speech to have a clear carry out message. So for me, it, when I was asked to do this, this is what it looked like for me, right? Um, I, I I did agree with Akshaya, the taxi cab driver and Chef Hyken. It was a moment of misery when the chef when chef saw uh, the cab driver. The cure is the air conditioned car, the candies definitely, and looking forward to his next trip. That's the change for me. That was the change. Looking forward to his next trip. My carry out message was customer service is an opportunity to exceed your customers expectations because I'm thinking from a sales mindset. Nimish is thinking from a moral mindset. Kanish is thinking from maybe what he's going through or what he experienced somewhere else. Right. So it's very important to have your carry out message so that it is very clear to the audience what you want to do. In this case, Chef Hyken was trying to teach everyone about important, how important customer service is. If a customer, if you want to make that sale, it's important to connect with the customer. Now I know that information because I follow Chef Hyken. I know that that is his focus. So in his speech, it's important that he mentions the carry out message some way or form or shape, right? So when you guys do a speech, I've heard so many speeches where I'm wondering what this is about. Well, like, what do they want? Do they want me to save the environment? Do they want me to go out and buy something, do something? I'm lost. That carry out message is your summary statement, yeah? So this is how one of the storytelling methods I'd like you guys to start using when you do public speaking, right? All right, next, 
let's try and okay this is another game oh let's do oh i think i gave the answer did i get the answer yes i gave the answer <laughs> um that's okay maybe people were not paying attention actually before i here you go let me so again it's on slido so if you guys can all go into slido uh and click on that link and type your answer and i will check so the question is what public uh what uh, percentage of public speaking are words so if you can Share your answers, and I can put up the slide that shows what your answers are. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Nice, I like you guys uh, all wo voting. Okay, perfect, so this is how it looks like. So what percentage of public speaking are words? And you guys, a majority of you said 60%, and 30% is the next 15 and 7%. Actually, what percentage of public speaking is words? It's actually 7%. <laughs> let, me, let me share why. Okay, here you go. So here's your... I know it's now it's 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 really good learnings when you understand what true public speaking is all about. This is something that had to be taught to me as well. I was similar to you guys. I thought if I spoke English and English is not my first language, it is my second language. So if I when I started doing public speaking, I thought, oh great, right? If I spoke really well, then people are going to be happy with me. But that's not it. 7%, just literally 7%. Because imagine if someone, have you had one of those boring teachers, and it's okay to tell me, uh, who just comes and who just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. Anyone? Anyone has had that experience? Yep. All right, Akshay. Secret, don't worry. <laughs> you know, some people just think that just talking and lecturing is what will get through to people, but that's not true. You need to have the, that's just 7% of your message your, is words. 38% is your tone. So imagine if I came here, and I'm not saying I'm the best public speaker, but I've learned enough to know that I can't be sitting here and saying, public speaking involves three things, uh, storytelling, blah, 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 blah. In storytelling, it is the character, the cure, the conflict, um, and the carry up message, right? Uh, sorry, character, cure, conflict, change, carry up message. Like, imagine, imagine hearing that tone for the next, you know, one and a half hours. Akshaya, Nimesh, Vishish, you guys will probably like switch off the camera, go, I don't know, what, whatever. All my students also would do the same thing. So it's important to have that tone. Like when you're saying something sad, oh, I was impacted by something. I really feel, uh, I, I really feel angry about something. That's your tone. And that makes a huge difference because that's what connects with your audience. And 55%, guys, 55% of your public speaking component is your body language. That's your whole body, <laughs> right? Of course, in video, it's hard for me to show but body language is head, shoulders, knees, and toes, everything, right? It's how you walk on stage, how you present yourself, how you stay up confidently. Like if I was to like all the time slouch or look away, you know, move my mouse, do things like that, it, it, it's distracting. You need to know how to present, how to look straight at the camera, engage with your audience. That's body language. And 55%, so this is an eye opener for all of you guys because no one chose 7%, 55%. So when you go out there and you think you gave a really good speech, always think about how your body is, how you're confidently promoting yourself, all right? Now, there are various ways. So this, this component is all about that 55%. As leaders, as speakers, the way you sit, the way you talk, the way you sit, the way you stand is very, very important. So over here, 
you'll see um, this first, sorry, here's my laser pointer. The, these are the top ones are the high power poses that I would love for you guys to take away today. If you can even incorporate one high power pose, I think the superwoman uh, and the superman pose is usually the the most famous pose where you have things uh, when, you, when you have hands on your hips. And I usually do that to my students just before they give a speech. I tell them, okay, Superman pose or Superwoman pose, and they love it. I mean, they, they, they find it really funny. They used to find it very funny to have to do it, but now they understand, right? That is very important to feel confident before you go out on stage. And these are the low, so if you catch yourself even sitting uh, in class, if you catch yourself like hunching, realize that your teacher is probably thinking you're not confident. If you go into an interview, like some of you I know are 13 year olds, 14 year olds. I know some 14 year olds who are applying for jobs to work in McDonald's or in um, Harvey's, wherever, and they need help in the interview. And the first thing I tell them is body language is key. If you walk in there with confidence, they're gonna like you because they're gonna know that you'll greet their customer with a smile and with confidence. Confidence, right so interviewing just make sure that you okay don't sit like this in an interview please don't do that but sit up right right sit up right with a smile on your face and then you can really have an engaging conversation this usually is a pose by the boss right like listen to me they, they put their hands down on the table and they're really telling everyone, I'm the boss, you got to listen to me. So these are really important power poses. And, and uh, you can definitely look at a TED talk on this. I have references on all that information. So body language, 55%, guys, that's very important. All right, this part I'll go through a little faster because I know I only have another half an hour with you guys. So we talked about storytelling, which is essential. We talked about the five C's, right? Um, Akshaya, would you like to tell me what the five C's are of storytelling? Characters, conflict, cure, change, and the carry out method. Perfect. Love it, right? So we learned that. And Nimish, would you like to talk about uh, what is the percentage of public speaking that's important? And uh, It's 55% for body language, 38% yeah. for... 7% for words and 38% for, uh, percent for the expression. Yes, perfect. For the tone, yeah. vocal variety. For the tone. Tone. Yeah. yeah, right. So now you guys have that because that'll be a question that'll come eventually in your life. Now we're going to go into what is called speech content. So you know the basics, the high level basics of public speaking. Let's go into how do I make content that will move my audience? So when I was doing this uh, presentation slide, I was thinking, okay, who is my audience and how do I you know, help you guys in whatever way I can? First of all, when you're writing your speech content, you have to understand where you want to go with this. So in my case, I want to educate all of you guys to be leaders in whatever field. Like I can imagine Akshaya standing on stage and singing powerfully and moving the audience with her lovely voice, right? And I wanna help her in, in that journey as well. So now how do I move Akshaya to be able to not be fearful? If she was one of those kids who said, I'm nervous, well then how do I move her to be okay, I wanna have some butterflies in my stomach, but I wanna be up there and really passionately singing, you know, singing away. That's deciding how I want to move my audience. Then it's audience analysis. And the third one is of course, our favorite, a lot of my students hate this, <laughs> gathering content and researching, but I have some methods that make it easy. Uh, of course, you you can gather so much. Like I could make this presentation a 12 hour presentation. I give, give you so much information on the basics of public speaking in 12 hours. I've got that much material, but I only have one and a half hours. So what can I put into that one and a half hours? So that's editing and that's remembering my carry out message. Multi-sensory augmentation, I'll, I'll share what that is and rehearsing. So remember if anything, these are the six things to creating speech content. Now, deciding where you're going. There are so many ways to figure out, okay, how do I move my audience? I'm, I'm sharing the three tools there. The first tool is just writing down the sentence. I want to change the way people think about blah, whatever it is, right? Whatever you're passionate about. 
I so maybe actually I'm just uh, because I heard from you. I want to change the way my parents think about a singing career. Uh, okay, now I know that's your that's how you have decided that's what I, or I want to change the way parents think about the singing profession. Anything, right? That's your speech. Another tool is three things you know to be true. So I know when I was young, I wanted to be an actress and my dad was like, are you kidding me? Are you gonna go up on stage? Are you, there's no way you can get into that industry. That industry doesn't even pay well, whatever. But is that really true? Is that true information? We don't know, right? All, so I need to find out what is true about that information. So for example, um, I taught my son this, he loves video gaming. So I was like, okay, so you wanna change the way parents think about video gaming because I'm like, oh, come on, stop playing video games. And now I'm convinced that video gaming is good. But he took me through a journey. He told me things like, so mom, as a, I mean, it was a speech, <laughs> but he said, as of 2019, video gaming, they generate $140 billion a month. $140 billion in money. And I'm like, really? Wow, how, how did they do that, right? And he was like, you know, if I learn about video gaming, if I learn about uh, UX design, interface design, I can easily get a job for 100,000. Here's the path. I'm thinking, wow. And then he showed me some YouTube influencers who are already making money. And he, he's 11 years old. He's like, they're 11, they're 15, they're 20, and they're making more money than you are, Amma. So video gaming is pretty cool. So now all of a sudden I'm getting educated by my son and I'm thinking, oh, this, this actually makes some sense. I, I need to let him explore that world. Why not, right? But it's about the way you do your research and understand where you want to take the audience. Like I'm resisting this. I want you to be studying. I want you to be learning. Okay, I'm not the typical parent, but I'm a little more open. Either way, I don't want, to, I don't want my son to be on playing video games the whole time, right? So he had to convince me. So there's the three things you know to be true. That's research. And the other thing is the level statement. It's just like your carry out message. If you keep asking why, why, why multiple times, you will have your main message. So how many of you watched uh, the movie Three Idiots? Did anyone watch Three Idiots? Yeah, Akshay Ad Advait, I think. Uh, Vishish, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's great. So you uh, did, did you did you watch that um, that scene where Virus? You you remember Virus, the the teacher? That's his name, right? Virus, right? No, Doctor Virus Sastraboshti. <laughs> he came out and he showed a pen. Do you remember that scene where he showed a pen to all these new graduates and he's like, this pen was given to me by the director and this pen, it costs so much money, millions and millions of dollars to make this pen because they want to, to use this pen in space. They wanted a pen to be used in space that can help he, the astronauts write. And then what did Ran, Rancho Amirhan say? Do you guys know his response? I don't. I'm pretty sure he said like they just use a pencil or something. Yeah, exactly, Advaita, right. Yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, that's exactly what he said. He's like, why didn't they use a pencil? They could have saved millions and millions of dollars. So think about it, right? When you're deciding where you're going, don't assume that your audience needs, uh, uh, needs only one particular solution. So in this case, the professor or whoever came up with a problem statement, they just said, okay, uh, my problem statement is I want a pen to write in space. That's where they decided where they were going. I want, but instead, if you say, okay, if someone asked him, why, why do you need a pen? Uh, I want to record all that information. Okay, why do you want to record all that information? I want everyone on earth to know what's happening. That's what Chris Hashfield did, right? He wanted everyone on earth to know that he was singing, that he was interacting and all that stuff. Oh, okay, now I get it. You want to connect with your audience in Earth, perfect. It can come in many forms. It can come in the form of a pencil and a pen, video, audio, whatever. But what I'm saying is ask that question, why, why, why many times to yourself. When you're writing your speech, when you're coming up with the, I, I want to, I want, you know, parents to accept the singing profession, even ask why. Right? Why do you want to accept that singing profession? If you if you ask at a very general level, then you can touch more more audience, more audience segments. Okay, 
This is a slightly higher uh, concept, but I think you guys would get it. Okay, so we move on now. Deciding, we decided where we want to go. Next is audience analysis. Now, in my case, I this is this uh, presentation. I could use it mostly for younger students who are new to public speaking. Now, if I was to teach more advanced people, I can't use the same presentation because they're gonna be like, oh no, we know 7%, we know the 38%, we know the 55%, really stop wasting our time, right? So really know who your audience is, who are you speaking to? In my case, I kind of figured you guys might not know the answer to that. And so now it's an eye opener for you guys. Same thing, always ask, and I have a couple of questions over there, you know, what does their life look like? Like, what does a teenager's life look like? Are they working all the time? Are they trying to save the world? No, I mean, you know, teenagers are pretty cool. They, you know, they, they have a couple of different concerns, a couple of different uh, good, good times, bad times. I, I'm just imagining a typical teenager's life. What did they, why did they come to this event? Like, did their parents force them, hold them at gunpoint and say, go to this? Or maybe they said, you know, I want to learn public speaking. I do want to learn something about leadership. Uh, what keeps them awake, right? Maybe I want to be able to confidently go to an interview. I want to be, I want to confidently ask a girl out. <laughs> Whatever it is, right? That might be keeping them awake. How can you help them? Like, how can I help transform them? What can I do uh, for them? And also, how might they resist? Now, if I tell you guys, here are the five principles to public speaking, um, and you need to do it right now, you might resist it, okay? So I incorporated some games so that I can interact with you. Those are things that you think about. And what do they need to know? What do they need to take out? And what resources can you provide? So this is just audience analysis. Sorry, I'm going a little fast because I know um, I might be running out of time. All right, I know you guys, some of you went to uh, yesterday's uh, course, uh, not yesterday, sorry, last weekend's course on time management. Now, if I was to gather content, and I told you gathering content is boring because it's a lot of research. So one of the ways to enjoy gathering content is to do this process called mind mapping. Mind mapping is just putting in, so in this case, it's time management. And then I tell my students, okay, let's talk about mind management. Whom are you trying to impact? What are you trying to, what is the message that you're trying to get out of this whole thing, right? So the speaker that came last week about time management, that's how I would be going through. Let's talk through the steps and what's your call, carry out message. And this mind mapping is really strong tool to gather content. Of course, you need to edit your content once you've gathered all your content. And I usually try to follow a model called the success model. The success model is really to help you stick, make your story stick. Now, there's a lot of principles in this. Again, like I said, it's just a high level overview. If you can just understand that it's important to be simple, your story needs to be simple so that it can connect to an audience. There has to be twists and turns sometimes in your speeches, like unexpected. Sometimes you can you can talk about a very happy day and then boom, it became a really bad day, just like the movie, The Flash, right? Unexpected twists and turns. There has to be, you, you know, if you're talking about, if Akshay is talking about singing and she says, anyone who enters the singing field becomes a millionaire. Now, I'm not going to believe that, right? It's a hard field. I know that, right? Any field. I can't, I can't stand here and say, if you get a degree in computer science, you'll make a million bucks. No, that's not true. So it has to be concrete and it has to be credible, right? And, and in concrete, we're going to, I'm going to cover sensory augmentations, but that comes under concrete as well and emotional. Human beings are emotional, right? If I want to connect with another human being, it is not talking about laws and principles. It's talking about our emotions. Like I said, storytelling is about our fears, our deepest fears, our deepest sadness, our most happiest moments. That's what people actually connect with. That's what kids connect with, babies connect with, adults connect with, old people, everyone. So emotions. And then of course, stories. Now, multi-sensory augmentation. If one thing, if you, um, I don't know, all of you have gone to kindergarten, I'm sure, and in kindergarten, there's this thing called show and tell, right? Show and tell. Anyone participated in show and tell? <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
um, I still ask some of my students, yes, Akshaya, I still ask my students to uh, do show and tell, but of course not the kindergarten style, <laughs> no more the kindergarten style. But the reason I ask my students to really focus on show and tell is to really talk about the emotions, the, to activate your sensory glands, right? What do you see? What do you smell? What do you feel? What does it taste like? Explain, take me through that journey. So in your story, you're taking me through that journey rather than just saying that, you know, uh, uh, everyone knows what's happening right now. George Floyd, the black American movement, right? Yeah, I see Akshaya shaking her head. Yeah. So imagine if someone came to you and said, we need justice for black Americans and then walks away. You're going to be like, oh, okay, dude. Well, that, that's great for you. Well, <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Right. But if they came up and they say, I am annoyed by what is happening and to prevent further injustice to black Americans, we should march together and, you know, hold hands and show our solid solidarity. Now, there in someone is telling you what to do. Someone is telling you how they're feeling. Someone is asking you for support. Right. All that is connections and emotions that are involved to connect people. And that is multi-sensory. And that's why I make my students do show and tell. Not because it's easy, but because the best storytellers are able to in invoke so much emotion in their stories, even without you knowing. That's why you say yes to people. You say yes to people because of all these little things that they do. And finally, 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 it's rehearsing. You have to rehearse, right? I mean, if I came here, if I just, you know, started talking away, you guys are going to be like, um, I'm not interested, right? I could just be like sitting and talking. I actually rehearsed. I actually thought through, okay, who are these kids? Whenever I go to a course, I try and understand what do they want to get through, right? Start with a powerful sentence rather than, hi, my name is, I, you know, I, I, I kind of talk through public speaking and everything as well. And it's so important with your body language, knowing where you're going. You have to plant your feet firmly, rehearse being confident, rehearse your power poses, be comfortable with pausing. Pausing is so important, especially when you're, I don't know if you saw this 21 second pause that Justin Trudeau did when he was asked about the black, uh, what was happening with uh, uh, the African-Americans recently. Just, just Google the 21 second pause by Trudeau. It just happened very recently. And it is so impactful. When you have someone just pausing and then saying something, it just creates immense impact. I do the same thing for interviews. I tell my students, when someone asks you a question, tell them, I just need five seconds or 10 seconds to just think through it. And they appreciate it. They actually appreciate it, right? Speak to uh, this one thing, speak to one, look to all. So if I was uh, standing up on stage and giving this presentation, I would not be just glancing at everyone. I would process, if Akshaya is sitting at one point, I would look at Akshaya but I'm still noticing what Visish is doing, what Advaita is doing, right? I would, I would notice that, but I'm looking at Akshaya. It's important to look at someone, talk to that person, but I'm talking to everyone because that creates more of an impact than if I was just glancing and looking at everyone, right? It, it helps there. And of course, with rehearsing, make sure you say it out loud a couple of times before you go to your audience. So I do that with this. I said it out loud a couple of times to see how I felt, uh, I removed content and all that. So that's that's rehearsing. I know I covered a lot. So if I, just take this for speech content, decide where you're going, analyze who your audience is, gather all your content, edit it, think about show and tell, think about all the feelings, rehearse it as much as possible. All right, so that is your speech content. If I, I know it's 5.15, so if I can just tell you one takeaway today, from a leadership perspective, when you walk into a room, just know, do you command a room? So this part, I finished a public speaking. I covered on, you know, a couple of things. I covered a lot on storytelling. I covered a, uh, I covered a little bit about body language, and then I covered about, a bit about uh, speech content. So that's public speaking. Now leadership, just this one segment, because I want to give you guys time to ask me questions. Um, just know that when you walk into a room, use your body language to command the room. Like have charisma, have that smile. If you're angry, then you know have that stern look, 
right? Show that you're reliable, that you are, and also make sure that you're relatable, whoever it is, whether it's an adult, whether it is, um, uh, you know, someone your age or someone younger, right? Have good composure. If you can at least take one of these four things that I mentioned, that makes you closer to lead, that gets you closer to being a leader than those who are not aware of these things. Okay, so that's just that one, yeah. All right, so now I covered the who I am, why public speaking is important, what you can do, and now I'm gonna cover just how you can do it. There's many methods of doing, uh, improving your public speaking and leadership. There are lots of books out there on learning. So this is asynchronous learning. You guys are in a world of YouTube, podcasts, um, you know, Netflix, Disney, I, I watch all of this and I get a lot of leadership and public speaking information through that. So if you are interested, these are some of the books that I recommend to students to read and they, they love it, they enjoy it, I get good feedback. I, I didn't write any of this, but I love uh, my students read it as well. Um, over here, you can see some of the podcasts. This is Simon Sinek, the, the golden circle that I talked about, the start with why. I highly encourage if you guys are podcasters and listen to his podcast, listen to, uh, you know, Jim Rohn, Jim, uh, Darren Tay. This is Darren Tay. This is uh, Amy Cuddy. If you guys watch Disney, then there's the Marvel Hero Project. There's the Science Fair. All these things actually show you about public speaking and uh, leadership uh, skills. All right. Now, of course, for, for students and adults, they're both the same. Knowing information is one thing, but practicing and getting coached on it is another thing. That takes you to the next level, and that's what I do. So if you guys ever have any questions about public speaking or leadership, I'm happy to answer questions. As you can see, I go to a lot. This, this one was a pitch competition. Some of my students actually pitched uh, cryptocurrency. Um, there's, a, there's a method to actually pitching and asking for investor money. The, we I moved online. To, it, to online teaching because of COVID. So these are some of my students and their parents um, that uh, joined one of my sessions. So you can connect with me through LinkedIn, if you guys have LinkedIn or just uh, my email as well. And if you guys have LinkedIn, let me just show you uh, for your parent, if your parents are around, um, this is my LinkedIn page. And if uh, right now what I'm doing for students, at least my students, uh, sorry, my page is, I think it's loading. Oh, it went to the job site. Hold on one second. Mm. Uh, let it load. Okay. So if you guys are on LinkedIn, then definitely try and connect with me. Um, uh, a lot of my students are actually on LinkedIn. And what I have been doing, just go to my post sections. And what I've been doing is getting guest speakers to come to my classes and speak about many things around public speaking and leadership. So about hackathons, about UX design, um, about resume writing, cover letters. So this is a recruiter that came um, uh, and did interviewing and all that. Uh, the, this is a technical cyber specialist who talked about success. So. In all my classes, I try and get some guest speakers to come and speak about public speaking and leadership. So I know it is 5.20 right now. I want to give you guys 10 minutes to ask any questions that you have around public speaking and leadership. So Murali or Nivas, if you want to open up the floor to questions. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much. So we have yeah. the floor open already. We have the videos running and everybody is unmuted. So there's no uh, mute from the moderator side. Um, okay. so everyone who's on the call, please feel free to ask any question that you may have um, and related to the subject. Uh, so I have a question. Yeah, actually, yeah. go ahead. So well, you know how um, like a lot of people do get nervous when they start presenting. Yep. So kind of like how do you get rid of that nervousness? So again, that nervousness does not go away immediately. Just like how I cannot expect you to, you know, finish your bachelor's a uh, bachelor's degree, which is four years in two minutes, right? Nervousness goes away mainly if you are confident about what you want to speak. So I, I, I felt like you were passionate about singing. If you had to, if you had to convince, 
if you had to convince someone that singing is my journey, now you feel passionate about it and you feel strong and no one's going to stop you. If I put you on stage to explain that, your nervousness will naturally fade away. You'll have a little bit of nervousness, but you won't have nervousness about the material. What you're nervous about is just going up on stage. But once you start talking passionately, the nervousness just goes away. Trust me on that. So what I'm saying to you is everything that I covered on creating speech content, on knowing that your body language is important, just by knowing this, Akshaya, that people are watching your body language. So you have to have all those power poses. Just having that knowledge in the back of your head and knowing that you are this, you are becoming the stronger and stronger speaker, that nervousness goes away slowly. But it, it happens over time if you incorporate these principles. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. How can I start practicing skills, like all the skills you taught? practicing the skills okay so if you want to practice it on your own um it is it, i i would say find an opportunity to find even 20 people who will listen to you and find an opportunity to talk about something that you really like because if you don't have that opportunity then you won't be motivated to practice that skill right uh, it's just like it's it's like any i don't know kanish have you done like lego competitions and uc mass competitions and all those things have you have you done any competitions to do with academics yes yeah it's those competitions that motivate you to study. So UC mass competitions make you study math really well so that you can stand on stage and do things. So to incorporate the skill, I'm saying first try and find an opportunity. Don't if someone offers in, in this case, you know, Nivas came up to me and said, Hey, you know, would you would you uh, be open to teaching these kids? Now I could say, No, 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 I'm I'm too nervous. Or I could be like, Okay, I'll I'll give it a shot. The second thing is obviously, if if anything, the the most basic thing that I want you to take out of this whole thing is storytelling. So that concept that I talked to you about the five C's, if you practice that in storytelling, that's good enough. That's a good start, right? Just a good start, just practicing that storytelling. I did not cover other basics in public speaking. For example, like your introduction should be a big bang, your conclusion should be connected to your introduction. These are basics of public speaking. But from today's lesson, if you can take those five C's and start making your story, start writing stories, so anything that happened to you, if you are a basketball player, if you're a soccer player, something happened to you when you played soccer. Some Someone must have either hurt you, made you happy, write stories, but write it in those five C's, right? And then one day when someone asks you to come on stage and give a motivational speech, you've got all these stories lined up and all you need to do is just keep practicing it. I know, did, did I answer your question, Kanish, or? Yes, thank you. No problem. Anyone else? I think, I think no one has any questions. <laughs> Hopefully things are clear. All right, so I just wanted to share, again, I put my email address there, my LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me. Your parents can certainly connect. When you do connect, just tell me that you came. There's a lot of people who try and connect with me through LinkedIn. Sorry? Oh, there are a few people who try to connect me, uh, connect with me through LinkedIn, but if I don't know you, unfortunately, I, I, I just don't accept LinkedIn uh, um, connections. So when you're trying to connect with me, make sure you tell me you're from the Telugu Foundation, and I'm happy to help. I'm happy to connect. Otherwise, email is the best, best route. Thank you, Anu. It was a very good lecture, and uh, hope the kids got the uh, required skills for the leadership and the public speaking area. 
thanks for your taking your time no problem thanks tim bas thank you see ya bye guys thank you so much anu you have a wonderful evening and take very good care of yourself thanks more thank you take care bye, bye. bye. take care guys bye akshay thank you bye bye see you see ya